Colorado is very, very different. What's cool is the natural feature you can see every day. You don't always see the ocean when you live on the coast, but you see the mountains every single day, which is really cool. I'm standing inside the space. Yeah, how's it looking? Uh, it looks raw. It's a great space though. It's gonna work out really good for what we're doing. So the whole purpose behind this building is primarily not gonna be around supporting sport. The first priorities are gonna be supporting gyms. We get to drop in and we get to be the kind of inaugural user with 22.1. So I think the open announcement is actually gonna be on the, that back wall. In normal conditions, outside of like COVID years, we usually fly into an affiliate three days before show day. And then we build the lighting rig, then we build a new kind of competition footprint, and then we put together the whole show. So we're used to rolling a truck in and getting everything started, you know, 72 hours before show days. So the fact that we're one week out and it's empty, doesn't bother me at all. The next three weeks, there will be open announcements that will feature some of the most elite athletes in the sport of CrossFit. But the best part is this is happening in almost every single CrossFit gym across the world and shows a lot of people that they have a little more in them than they realize. Sir, look over there. What's behind you? Oh my gosh, what's over there? No, awesome. Oh, all right, man. Yeah. We've seen him. What's up, Patty B? 22.1 open announcement, the first one of the season, taking place in Boulder, Colorado. And we have four really talented athletes throwing down on the men's side. Pat Vellner is gonna go up against Noah Olson. And then on the women's side, you have Daniel Brandon and Bethany Shatter. Great to see you. See you too. Hello. Hi, Danielle. Hi. How are you? Wonderful. How are you? Pat and I were taking some prop bets on like little subtle things for today. And we were wondering what color your hair was gonna be. <sighs> Kept know. it blonde. Kept it blonde. The Open is actually probably one of my favorite parts of the season because it is essentially the style that I fell in love with when I first got into CrossFit. The workouts are usually an AMRAP with simple movements. You've got a barbell, maybe a dumbbell, a jump rope, all the things that you're doing in a class at any CrossFit gym. I think the Open for me, it's, it's more about being able to share and relate with a huge community and like being able to talk about it afterward and just relate to each other on a on that kind of scale and level. Nobody wants to do a competition that has some crazy stuff that you're seeing at the games. I want everybody to be able to do it so that I get to do it with as many of my friends as possible. It's a fun way to kick off the season, for sure. Like the nose ring. Twinsies. Love it. You inspired me. I saw that and I was like, <laughs> it was fake though, right? At first, you were like, should I do it? I think it's an honor to be invited always. I've done several in my career, I've been really lucky, um, but they're always fun. That was my ears are getting a little burning out here. I hit my fingers a little bit. Should we go inside? Yeah, we should. The open announcements really are an iceberg. There's so much that goes on beneath the surface that really sets the foundation for these to be able to happen in the first place. This freshly placed rubber. So this is meant to be the new boulder studios for all of CrossFit. It's not only going to be used for you know, open announcements, but it's also going to be used to put out a lot of content that's going to help make affiliates and coaches better. Sorry, are you filming someone? You guys. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Five weeks ago, we just signed the lease. There was like four rooms here that were demolished, right? And so it's literally custom building a set it's not like we just show up, set up the cameras, throw on the lights and go. We're doing the blocking rehearsal for open announcement 22.1. Chase, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Can you hear me clearly? Yes, I can. Okay, can you tell Sean that his, uh, <laughs> they're gonna replace his <laughs> box with the Can you hear me? Okay. Expectations for the rehearsal? Uh, well, let's yeah, not make too many mistakes, I guess. A little less yeah. music under her mic. Yep. There are 15. There's a lot of technical considerations that have to be ironed out, you know, music cueing, lighting, all of the things that make it look good on camera and, and in people's homes. It doesn't just happen, so you gotta step it all through. So rehearse, rehearse, rehearse. Go to my website to check out the courses new. I realize I'm repeating myself, so I'll change that by tomorrow. Thanks, Sean. What we're going to do now is we're going to spend about uh, a half hour kind of going through the portion of the show 
when you guys first arrive, where your warm up area is going to be. We're going to rehearse the most important parts, which are when you're introduced and you come out on the field of play. I think thinking about hundreds of thousands of people across the world watching is comes with a mixed bag of emotions. It's exciting, it's exhilarating, it can also be a little bit nerve wracking. It also brings with it a sense of pride in the fact that I would get to represent for my friends and family that are watching all around the world, get them excited to tune in. So I'm, I'm just excited. I'm trying to really approach this week with a, a very positive mindset. Tia in Nashville, do you copy? Uh, yes, I have the rehearsal one and then I also have the actual one. So besides the fact that we got the live crowd back in this year's announcements, we also got Tia Claire Toomey, five-time fittest woman on earth, giving us our first workout. Man, Boz really sealed this envelope. Hot. Oh, we're here to watch the Open. We are uh, pumped. We've been here for doing CrossFit for about eight years now, so looking forward to our first Open announcement. To win the Open, I want Kevin Ogar to win the seated adaptive division. That's that's what I'm going for. Hi. <laughs> when you go to CrossFit every day and your friends do CrossFit and your whole world is this kind of like, this is just really cool to see people who are really, really good at this sport do what they do best. The importance of the announcements for me is really to add a celebratory piece to each open workout. Sure, you could just release the workout on the website, you know, at the specified time, but having a moment where you get some of the sports best, you get some of the community together, we get to rally around seeing this play out on the floor for the very first time, to me adds an importance to the workout that makes the rest of the community feel like they're taking part in something that's special. Before we get things started, do me a favor. If you're an affiliate owner, raise your hand. Come join me, we'd love to get you a group photo Really this is about coming back together, CrossFit supporting coaches and gyms that are transforming lives. And so using sport to reemphasize the methodology that the fittest people in the world do CrossFit, so do hundreds of thousands and millions of people around the world as well. I need a, sh a single on Sean for the top of the show. Five, Five four, three. three. Kill music Two, to the house. One, this and is the house. Rolex push. We're back, baby. <laughs> and not just us, we have a live audience. Pat Belmer and Noah Olson throwing down. Bethany Shadburn and Danielle Brandon. Number one, be ready to go upside down. Be prepared to jump. And you won't need a jump rope. So that's what I can give you. Take it. Thank you. Just keep it to yourselves, please. It's our intent that you guys are super well prepared, but also we still want this to be fun and exciting. So no social media, no sharing outside of that. They asked a couple questions and they answered. So I just respectfully for you guys, like don't ask, don't share. Is there any gamesmanship going into this one trying to pick up the W? Being Canadian always is an advantage uh, on any day. I mean, hey, I don't want to over inflate my own stock, you know? Under promise, over deliver, but I will crush it on. More or less, you're gonna see Patrick and I both trying to crush each other. I think it might be a, a handstand walk. Well, since I'm going up against Bethany, I kinda hope for like wall walks or something. <laughs> of 22.1, I give you five times fittest woman on earth, Tia Claire Toomey. 22.1 is a triplet. In 15 minutes, complete as many rounds and reps as possible of three wall walks, 12 dumbbell snatches, and 15 box jump overs. Let the games begin. I like that workout actually. Do you like wall walks? Yeah. 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 They're a little sketchy with my elbow at first, but we've been doing a lot of them. Brooke Wells is a seven time CrossFit Games veteran who looked like she was poised to have her best season ever in 2021. 
but unfortunately that got derailed with a really freak injury during the one rep max snatch event that knocked her out of the competition. That'll bring up Brooke Wells. It's a one rep max snatch. She looked like she was going to make the lift, but her right elbow dislocated and she immediately went down and everybody in that Coliseum knew something bad had just happened. Oh! Oh, no, 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 no. It just feels different. Like, I can't describe it. It's just like, it doesn't feel the same as it did before. I've just been like slowly started to mentally like prepare myself for the movements that are to come. And then I also have just like the best training partners. I get to train alongside Tia, who's the fittest on earth. And so I'm just surrounded by the best group of people, a ton of support. And I've really just used this year of like having an injury to get better at the things that I could and really worked hard on making sure my elbow was like super strong and just ready for another season. For a long time, like the first five months I trained completely alone just to make sure that I wasn't trying to like compete against anyone or try to win. Um, and then also like I couldn't really hang with other guys because just the movements that I couldn't do. I think a lot of it has been very mental because it's my first like true bad injury. And I constantly compare myself to where I was the year before, or like my lifts aren't near what they were. Brooke Wells just nails 415. It's just been a very challenging year, and I've just taken this extra time to really like refocus, trying to have the best perspective and mindset, and just doing everything that I can to not be upset. So our approach for Brooke on the off season was to take the pressure off her and her expectations prior to what they were. Given the circumstances, we've had to change a lot of things. How was your road? Good. Yeah. What were you ever doing? Oh, nice. And a lot of that was to remove the expectation of what you had preset. And then we'd come into the gym on a day-to-day -day basis and just focus on what we could control and where she was currently at. You're aiming for 50. Was that right? I've actually been surprising myself in a lot of things. I think I've been like compensating for my elbow because I've been doing really well in like cardio and lifting and everything. I'm getting really good at the things that I can because I can't do some things on my elbow. She's been able to reset herself essentially and everything's from zero from this point on. So I'm just kind of like hanging around 80% of my lifts, not pushing volume too heavy on my elbow. I do that by like adding one movement in a week or like adding five pounds at a time to a lift per week. And now as we progress through in the further stages of recovery, we've been able to move better at heavier loads. Very nice, cool. So let's see how high we can get that bar through the legs. Come on, get on your quads. There you go, nice. So we gotta work out how we don't have to be shocked when we receive the bar low. Think about using those great fast elbows, receive, Think about snapping the elbows for lockout. Like, be aggressive, like bang, straight to that position. Yeah, I know, but 200 pounds. You got it now, come on. That's okay. So two big things there. Shane is a great coach for Brooke because Brooke has all the physical potential to be on the podium. What she lacks is the confidence. We saw him work with Tia uh, between 2016 and 2017 and what a difference that made. And I think it can make a huge difference for Brooke. Perfect, well done. It's so awesome to have Shane as a coach and it's amazing to have Tia as a training partner. They're just like the perfect duo. We work so freaking hard, but we also have so much fun. When you're training with the best, I mean, you just push yourself to the next level. Even if we have a really hard workout, like at least you're doing it with people that you like that are gonna push you to be better. I wanna have my best year yet, so I wanna make it back to the games once I'm very confident on my elbow and I can like bring it fully back into the picture. Nice, good job, way to finish. As long as I can just get through the open and get through quarterfinals, I can start to really like push semifinals and then peak at the games. I'm ready, Chase is ready, the crowd is ready, we hope you're ready, the athletes are ready. Let's go down to the competition floor. Adrian Bosman to get this thing kicked off. 
three, two, one, go! And with that, the 2022 Noble CrossFit game season is officially underway. This is actually where you can separate yourself from the field, is how quickly you can go through the wall walks. Look at the speed off the ground for Danielle Brandon. She'll walk her hands out, boom, right back up. The competition between Pat Vellner and Noah Olsen was really interesting in the way that it played out. Olsen into round number eight. Noah went out pretty hot, had an aggressive pace, and Pat Vellner was just kind of hanging back doing his thing. Bethany Shadburn has a slight lead now on Danielle Brandon. And this is where the transitions are coming into play because Noah's breathing a little bit heavier. And a little more than halfway through, I think Vellner was able to pass him. And for the first time in the head-to-head -head matchup, Pat Vellner has a lead on Noah Olson. For the first time in this workout, Danielle Brandon has a lead. Three seconds left, Vellner's gonna close out 11 total rounds and he's gonna win the head-to-head -head matchup with Noah Olson. And that will do it for Danielle Brandon who gets into round number 12 and gets through two wall walks in the process. What a great effort from both of these women. Good wall walks faster than I can do push-ups. The 22.1 announcement closes out with Pat Vellner beating Noah Olson, Daniel Brandon edging out Bethany Shadburn, and now everybody else gets to go after it. It's the first time since I've competed since the games, and I've really missed competing, especially watching like the other people compete at like the off-season stuff. So I'm excited to just get to do it again. Okay, Brooke Wells, CrossFit East National, 22.1. So my reaction to the first open workout is, honestly, I like it. Like, <laughs> there's wall walks, dumbbell snatches, box jump overs, nothing too complicated. Like, nothing you can really overthink. You just gotta go for it. Mal O'Brien basically blew onto the scene last season, doing really well in the open, and then finishing seventh at the games, rookie of the year. But she chose to give up everything, move to Vermont to train with HWPO, specifically Matt Frazier. And now it's not just, I wanna do really well, it's I wanna win, and I wanna win multiple times. It's almost go time, Matt. It is. You're more nervous now than when you were competing? It's right up there. Okay. Wouldn't want to read it as well, yeah. I'm not terrified about you doing well. You're gonna smash it. But setting up the cameras and like, that's what I'm worried about, just setting up the cameras. I know you're nervous. You're gonna be great. <laughs> 10 seconds. Give it a your everything. Anxious? Yeah, a little bit. I'm a good once we start. <laughs> Three, two, one. Three, four, five, nope. Clean reps, guys. Before a workout, I always tell myself that like, this is when it matters, this is what I train for. And so that just kind of like gets me in the headspace of like thinking about everything that I've done the past season to be ready for this moment. Time. Happy? No, I'm very happy. There's really nothing I could have done different. It's crazy to think that now that I'm like able to wall walk and just like sling around a 35 pound dumbbell, it's just it's been awesome to see the progress. Real fantastic start for Brooke Wells coming off the injury and jumping right into an open workout that was going to put a lot of stress on that elbow. She finishes 21st. I think that result should give her a confidence boost as she moves through the rest of the season. Whoa. Fucking great job, dude. That was nerve wracking on my part. I've never, I've never refereed or judged somebody. I felt so bad giving you a no rep. I felt so bad giving you a no rep. Last time we saw wall walks, it was at the CrossFit Games. Mal O'Brien won that event. They show up again in the open. Mal O'Brien goes out and does what she does whenever you see that movement and went out at what looked like a reckless pace, but was able to maintain it the entire time and wins 22.1. I, I took a peek at the clock at round, when you finish round seven, I think. And I was like, oh, oh, okay. Like, you never slowed. You never slowed down. Matt Fraser. 
training Mal O'Brien is like if Darth Vader got to actually train Luke Skywalker after he turned to the dark side. It's a scary, scary combination, and Mal is not going to be using this for knowledge and defense. She's going to go out there and attack people. On the next, Miles to Madison. It feels really good to be in Rogue Headquarters. It's a little bit intimidating, but it's very cool to be here. Well, I've never seen anything like this before. We do fuck you! I feel ready for everything. I love box jumps, but I don't think we'll see those again. 22.2 .2 is... Oh my god, that's so heavy. I'm scaling this one. I really kind of want to make a statement like, that year wasn't a fluke for me. I'm going to be around for a while. Hi. This is Owen. He's my baby. Say hi to everyone. <laughs> you can see the resemblance. 